Hello and welcome to another episode of Spirit Sherpa, the show that helps and encourages you on your journey to unlock your magic mojo. I am your host, Kelly Sparta. Josh, our new co-host, is not here today. He is busy doing an energy scan for my maid of honor at my wedding, my accidental maid of honor at my wedding, who is a former student of mine. Uh, and that that's a funny story and we'll talk about that in a minute but first I want to introduce you to uh, my guest for today this is Dr. Maria Rothenberger we know each other from the ethereal network uh, of podcasters and uh, so you've probably heard of her before because she has been one of our bonus episodes that I dropped for you guys from her own podcast uh, the reluctant medium and uh, so welcome to the show Maria I'm so happy to have you here what is up, Kelly? Way happy to be here. Thanks for that lovely intro and for having me. Appreciate you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love you. So we're just gonna we're gonna have a good time. But before we go too far, I want you to sort of give people a sense of who you are, and then we'll we're gonna mm -hmm. talk for a little bit, and then we'll go into the the, the details of the topic for the day. So tell us about yeah. you. Sure. Well, I was born. No. <laughs> Okay, so. <laughs> if you All right. know, you know, right? <laughs> All right, so I am Maria Rothenberger, the reluctant medium. Uh, I am someone who never thought I would be doing mediumship work. Uh, I once, I was actually, I was asked that recently. Why are you reluctant? And the reason is because I am a mental health therapist by trade and it's basically professional suicide to say you talk to dead right. people yeah. <laughs> so so i was very reluctant when i came across this awareness that i could um talk to well started with spirit babies uh, which is the episode that you dropped i don't know when that was uh, but uh, like recently yeah. yeah recently um i sat i, I realized, oh my God, this is a thing. And I sat on that for a good seven years before I did anything. Uh, but then I realized that it could be really helpful for people. And my work is really helping folks transform themselves, transition from a really dark space from like that shadow state, which everybody needs, by the way, we all right. need shadow. Um, but to help them transition from the shadow space to the bright space and maybe hold balance for both. Um, and I have a specialty in my mental health practice around uh, fertility stuff, which ties nicely to the spirit baby stuff. But um, I do all kinds of work around mediumship. And uh, today we're talking about past life stuff. And right. that's another big part of transition work or working through shadow stuff to reach the light. It's yeah. I think I just wear a lot of hats there, I Kelly. I think you do. Yeah. 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 So, you know, <laughs> what's really funny is that um, I, I said that Josh is doing a, an energy scan for one of my former students. She is also a therapist. And <sighs> so, yeah, so it's really funny. She she ended up being my accidental uh, maid of honor because... How does that happen? <laughs> I know, right? It's so weird. So my maid of honor was going on walkabout and I have to take ownership of this. She told me, I'm going on walkabout. I really am not a good choice for being your maid of honor. And I went, oh, it's okay. You don't have to do anything until the day of, it'll be fine. You know, you can be back in time, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, and then she didn't make it. And, you know, she told me she wasn't going to, and I refused to listen. But in the interim, all of the things that she was gonna do got dropped. And, uh, you know, one of my students heard me, heard me bemoaning the fact that I wasn't going to have a bachelorette or any of the things. And, and she said, I'll do your bachelorette. And I was like, really? I'm like, yes, thank you. <laughs> and she arranged, and it was a small thing. It was just her and, and my man, my, my man of honor. Cause I, um, uh, my, my best man, my, uh, mm -hmm. my husband and I each had a best man and best woman. Right. And, uh, so it was just us and we had the best time ever. And then the wedding day came and my maid of honor didn't show up again. Uh, you know, she wasn't going to be showing up. And so uh, this woman jumped in again and uh, was happy to stand up for me. And I was so appreciative of that. And so she was my wow. accidental maid of honor. So, uh, yeah, it was it was really cool. So, yeah, what so a story, it, uh, you know, 
of all the good things. And so when I just finished a, an episode just before this one with him, and he's like, oh, by the way, she says hi. I'm like, oh, my God, blast from the past. Because, you know, I've been married nine years now, so it's been a long time. Uh, and she's up in Boston. And we haven't even lived there since 2018, so that's been a long time. So uh, it was really nice to hear. And, uh, you know, the other thing that happened and I meant to mention this on the last show, but I'm going to tell you about it because clearly I meant to talk to you about it. That's right, obviously. That's right. Is uh, I just did a, um, a cacao ceremony with a woman who runs a chocolate, a, a very high-end chocolate place here in Panama. Mm. Oh and my God. they did an um, a equinox, a spring equinox celebration, a cacao ceremony, and a dinner in the jungle. Oh which, my God. Yeah. Which sounds amazing. And it, it was, it was also okay. very hot. Oh, <laughs> very hot. It was 35 degrees Celsius when we got there, which is like 102, right? Yeah. It was just, it was so hot and there was zero air conditioning available. So I, mm. at one point I went in and like grabbed ice and put it in a baggie and put it all over my body. <laughs> it was just like, I'm smart. Working. So but it was a lovely experience and and um i've got video from it that i'm going to turn into a TikTok, so you'll you guys will be able to see it if you want to but um yeah so that's what we did yesterday so if i seem, seem a little low energy today it's because i was completely dehydrated when i got home six hours after we started last night and Oof. i'm just like oh, i just want to sleep today <laughs> because it was a lot. Oh, and this is the funny thing too, is that, you know, we talk about this all the time on the podcast that when you open a circle, you have to remember to close it. Oh, as yes. We were, as we were getting ready to drive away, I rolled the window down and said, you didn't close your circle. You may want to do that before you yeah. get the bends. And she was like, oh right. my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like important, right? Because it's so easy to forget to close your circle. So easy, yep. right? So if you're doing ritual like that, don't forget to close your circle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, but back to past lives because you know. Yes. We, yeah. There's only so much we can shoot the shit before we have to actually talk about the topic of the day. But oh you know, man. <laughs> you know, I just want to tell you all about my life, Maria. I just want to hear all about yours. <laughs> that is why I'm a therapist. I know. That is exactly why you have the "tell me everything" just, tattooed on your forehead. <laughs> I do. I do. I'm here for you. Come on. <laughs> That's awesome. So. Tell us, so, you know, I get a lot of questions from people about past lives, right? Yeah. They're like, oh, well, you know, I want to know who I was and what I was. And a lot of times I'm like, it does not matter. Stop worrying about it, right? Mm -hmm. But sometimes it matters, right? Mm -hmm. And so I, I want to talk about the times that it matters for you to know yep. about your past lives. Can you, yep. you so, so ding, 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 go talk. Yep. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> For the next hour. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> this is, I mean, actually, there are two things that you said there that are, um, they seem opposing, but they're actually not. So I say something similar to people when they say, I want to know who I am because they're just curious. Right. Who was I? Was I, you know, Cleopatra is a big one. Um, and I, I also say, you know, it doesn't really matter, but what does matter is how those potential past life experiences impact you today. Correct. How do they impact your present life? So for example, um, I, I was trained, I was so fortunate to be trained by Dr. Brian Weiss, who's like pioneer in past life therapy. And um, this is back when I was not doing mediumship or spiritual work at all. I was just, uh, just a run of the mill therapist. And um, I was curious because it was therapy. And I'm like, how could something like that be therapeutic? Well, he was talking about in his first book, um, Many Lives, Many Masters, he met a patient, he was a psychiatrist who did not respond to medicine or traditional talk therapy. So he began doing hypnosis with her. 
and doing traditional like Freudian regression, which is this life. So like you go to this life, childhood, etc. And she spontaneously went to past lives. And he thought it was interesting and intriguing and maybe not real. But what ended up happening is that her symptoms began to disappear. Now, this is a woman who had been depressed for decades. Nothing worked. Depression to the point of not functioning. Her symptoms began to disappear. So, of course, not being naturally inquisitive, he began to, to do research on this and to open up his own mind around it. But the day that he realized this is a thing is when she said that she was in the place in between lives. Mm -hmm. We might call it heaven. Mm -hmm. um, and she met with uh, ascended masters who were telling her about Dr. Weiss's life things she couldn't possibly know, like he had lost a son and why he lost that baby, various things, many things. He said, I don't even have diplomas hanging on my wall. People just don't know things about me, especially details like that. So this was back in the, I think, 70s. And yes, so hey, there's a movie that was made out of <gasps> that. It's called On a Clear Day You Can See Forever. It's a Barbra Streisand what? musical. And it is the first role that Jack Nicholson ever had in a major movie. He was a minor what? player, but it's a fantastic Well, look at movie. you. Yeah. Look at you, connoisseur of random trivia facts. I love what? Barbara. <laughs> Barbara. Well, who doesn't Barbara. love Barbara, yeah. right? Yeah. Who doesn't Just love saying. Barbara? It's a Barbara thing. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I'm That's amazing. Forever. That's, that, well, check geez. it out. You would love it. Yeah. Uh, you know I would. So, so to, to circle back to your original question, it matters only in terms of how it impacts your present life. Yeah. That's it. And it's, it, it's kind of similar energetically to Ho'oponopono, right? There's, I don't know enough about, oh, I know, well, yeah, I know so, about the massage technique. <laughs> I don't, I don't know think that's the that. same thing at all. No. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so Ho'oponopono is about, um, uh, it's the the uh, the story that the, that uh, Joe Vitale tells about Ho'oponopono, which mm -hmm. is a Hawaiian healing practice, uh, is that there was a guy who was the head of a of um, psychiatric ward, and he came in and he took over, and the staff hated each other, and there was all kinds of infighting, and the mm -hmm. the patients were not getting better and everybody was miserable and and they were just they, they didn't know what to do with it and he did not meet with anyone but he picked up everybody's files and he sat with the files in his office and he opened the file and he would find the part of himself that related to the challenge that the person was having in the file hmm. and he would then go into the part of himself that was related to that topic and then he would deal with it and say you know um, I, you know, this is, I can't remember exactly the practice, but it's, it's something like, you know, I'm sorry, you know, I, I forgive you. Thank you. Right. Mm. Something like that. And just releasing all of the angst inside of himself related to the things that he was seeing in the files. And mm -hmm. over the course of several months of doing this, the entire facility turned around. Everybody was happier the patients got yeah. well and they ended up closing the facility because it was no, not needed anymore. That's so, amazing. Yeah. And so it's, it's, it's mm -hmm. a similar sort of thing, right? It's, it's because we are the same people, right? We're, we are we're all one. Person. Yeah. Well, yeah. we're all one in, in, in as different individuals as well, right? So we're we're yep. one in different people and we are the same person throughout all of our lives. You know, we're the same, soul, the same soul, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, it's not the same personality, but the same soul, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when you heal one part of you, whether it be somebody else or you or another life of you, it impacts everything else. And yeah. so every piece of work that we do within ourselves impacts everything else in all timelines. That's Which right. Is, Kind that, I'm glad that. you brought that up because, yeah, no, there's a thing called future life progression where you can impact future lives as well. Talk so, about that because I haven't heard about that. Yeah, that's that's something sense, that. But, yeah. Mm -hmm, right. And I mean, it, it goes 
exactly in line with what you just said, that you can impact past future, present, because it's all from a quantum reality, right? It's all happening right, right now. It's yeah. not, it's not separate from anything. All of our lives are happening right now. Yeah. And so you can impact. Yes, you can impact anything. We I did the, in the training, he did this cool thing where he took us, I don't even remember how many thousands of years in the future. And he in a, in a hypnosis, and then he asked us all what our experiences were. And it was amazing. The themes were all similar. Yeah. They were all, all of us were similar on earth. We didn't, yeah. we didn't go elsewhere, just, just on earth. And it was this utopian, like different species, even living together. It was amazing. <laughs> it's just so amazing. Derek so Lowe yeah. Knows. Yeah, who is part of our ethereal network group was on the show. Uh, yeah, I don't know, months and months ago. Um, but he did a guided meditation that I actually attended where he walked us through a uh, going 11 years into the future. So short time, frame, ah, right, yeah. which was amazing. And at the time I went into this meditation, I had zero idea how I would get there. And that meditation has actually impacted my life today. And I have actually been living into that meditation. Yes. Right. And yes, accelerating the timeline to get there. And what I had no idea how it was going to work. And this was like, I don't know, like eight months ago, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, at the time, I was like, I have no clue how this would work. My brain just cannot conceive of it. I don't know. I, I, okay, but what? But I mm -hmm. bought into it and I was like, yep, okay, this is, I liked what I saw and I liked what I, what I experienced and my, my future self, when I said, how does this work? It went, it just does, which mm -hmm. it, my future self was going, yeah, you're not ready to hear that yet. And I mm -hmm. wasn't because yeah. in the interim, there's been a lot of stuff that's happened that I, I shifted. And so now I can hear and, and understand what, what it was that, that I was um, looking at. Mm -hmm. And it makes perfect sense to me eight months later, how this is coming to fruition. Yeah. And only I'm eight like, months, only eight months. Right. That's correct. Compared to 11 years. Yeah. It, right. Exactly. And so I'm like, Oh, so we just shifted the timeline on that one. I'm just pulling that forward because that was not destined yeah. to happen for a longer time frame. And I just yeah. was like identity shift. Bang. Right. Yep. That's yep. the fastest way to change your timeline is an identity shift. Right. Yeah. So, but yeah, that was yeah. a function of future lifing as you know, it's, it's not yeah. another life, but is this life, but I sure. Right. Have a timeline, right. Right. Yeah. And there's something to be said for that too. Now, when you're doing, this is probably extra and probably a whole other like podcast, that. but, but how you impact. So, you know what? I'm just going to say this because you're a shaman. I yes. did. I, I finished my um, my uh, shamanic Reiki master training and we did a um, a uh, soul loss prevention practice. Okay. And how we did that was completely altering <laughs> for my present life. I mean, things shifted that I was like, well, what the fuck do I do now? I'm crying every day. Shouldn't I feel better? <laughs> Oh, wait a second. The all of the feelings that I've been protected from all these years are now accessible because that piece of me was brought back. And the idea around past life regression, th let me just delineate between the two. Past yeah. life regression, here's the two things. Past life regression versus past life regression therapy. Okay, there's yeah. two there's a couple different things here. Past life regression is for folks who are like, I'm curious. Who was I? Right. Past life regression therapy implies there's healing. Yes. And that's what Brian Weiss does. Um, the shamanic practice was definitely healing and it changed my present day life. I suspect it'll change a future life too. And, and this is like, woo woo. Um, it may have impacted past lives because it's all happening right now. Right. But okay. So the past life regression therapy is 
when you are experiencing unwellness, when you are not well in this present life and you've tried the things, you've tried them yeah. and you still feel like shit, mm-hmm. hey, may, not, may, may as well give past life regression therapy a try. Of course, you could just go there first if you want to, if you're interested in that kind of thing too. But, but more often than not, what the research shows is that if folks have a past life memory that is tied to their current symptoms, Mm -hmm. they don't have to do anything but remember. And it's very similar to that soul loss prevention that I had with shamanic, shamanic Reiki. I just remembered. And then all of the crap started being stirred up. It's very similar in past life regression therapy. You just remember this actually happened in my own experience. I don't know. I have actually never shared this experience publicly. <laughs> Are you, sure you want to? Should should I? <laughs> I think you absolutely should, but you know, it's up to you. <laughs> I will. I will. I will share it. I have shared I have shared that it happened, but I haven't shared details. So, Spirit Sherpa on the for the first time ever for Miss Kelly Sparta, I'm going to share this story. <laughs> my past life regression. So what happened was I was at a, I was just curious. Now, this is me back in the day as very sciencey minded, very evidence-based like therapy, you know, we need the evidence. Um, but I was curious because Brian Weiss is a very, I mean, he is, he's Harvard and Columbia trained as psychiatrist. And I'm like, freaking doing past, what, what? So I was curious and there's something that he said about past life memories coming up in dreams, especially Mm. in this life, if we need to, if we need that information, they will come to us in dreams. And the way that he described it was, it will be a dream that is so memorable. It's like in living color, 4K Ultra HD, right? It's like you, you will remember details. Well, I had a dream like that. And I have not, I still have not forgotten it. It's been 20 years. And when he said that on whatever interview he was doing, I was watching him, maybe it was Oprah or something. I don't know. Um, I, I remembered that dream and because there is now pretty powerful search engines on the internet, I was able to do some research on who this person might have been. Right. I was like, really, is it possible that I was actually this person and I'm like typing it out? Well, friggin a, here's the story, Kelly. Okay. So in my dream, I don't even look like myself. I am a woman, but I'm quite tall in, in this life. I'm five, one and a half. Okay. <laughs> Cause the half matters. Yeah. Don't forget the half. <laughs> um, but I was quite tall, maybe five, 10, um, very slender, long blonde hair. And the way that I saw myself in this dream was I was kind of like, viewing myself from above standing on top of this it looked like a medieval castle um and i was standing on top of this building getting some fresh air and there was a monk near me and he was so friendly he said i got the feeling that i wasn't technically allowed to leave but he said to me okay i'm gonna go over here and you know rest my eyes don't go anywhere and he like winks at me and in the dream I'm like okay and then I snuck out and I got on a horse and I went for a ride so I'm like what is it about what do I know about this dream that feels like truth to me but it didn't I didn't see it I felt like I was some kind of royalty but I was trapped I was stuck there with a monk some kind of religious order and there there were probably nuns there too i felt it in the dream so i'm like okay royalty stuck trapped convent whatever i i google searched it and i came up with a few things that just didn't fit and one of the things that brian weiss said is to tune into a potential century or decade with your memory. So I tuned into my own intuition. This is where intuition comes in really handy. And I tuned into a particular century and I looked that up. When I tell you, I'm like, 
I am freaking out. I came upon this woman that I was like, well, that fits, that fits, that fits. But you know, I don't, this is weird. Like, I'm not sure. Then the picture of the fucking building that I was standing on, Kelly, the building is on my computer screen. I'm looking at it. I'm like, oh, I'm getting chills right now. I was looking at the building that I was standing on. That's it. That's the building I was standing on. Ah! And I dug deeper and it turns out this was a priory that housed both nuns and monks. And this woman was the princess of Wales whose mother died in childbirth and her father died at war in a battle one year later. And one of the siblings of the king or the queen, I don't remember which side, um, was taking the throne temporarily until this princess was of age. But he decided he liked the power. Mm -hmm. So he no put her away. Yep. Mm -hmm. He put her away in this priory and said that she died to the public. Um, but she lived her days um, until 50 some odd years old um, in this priory. And she is revered today. There's all kinds of memorials around her. There's a whole Facebook group on her that I belong to. And I have not said a damn word to them about this, <laughs> <laughs> this past life experience. Um, and I, I'm just floored that this is a thing. Now, why would this be important for me to know? Right? That's the important thing here, right? Like, I why do past lives matter? being trapped or being removed from power or being denied your birthright, all of these things would be relevant? They would. However, in my life at that time, what was most important, this ties right back to what I said in the very beginning about my specialty, I was struggling with fertility issues. Mm -hmm. This woman was not allowed to marry or procreate because that would have been another heir to the throne. Right. Right. She was kept hidden. She was trapped inside. She could not. That um, order of nuns was never allowed to leave the building. They had to stay inside. Um, but in my experience, there was a garden in the back, which was one of my the favorite places to go. Oh, side note. Here's a side note. T trippy. Are you ready? You ready? Yep. There's more trippiness. Yep. So I had this memory in as this princess. And I was in this garden and I passed by, um, I was not a nun myself. I was quite young, maybe 19. I was not a nun though. Um, I was being escorted. Like I had to have like this, these people escort me. I wonder if it's because I wanted to get the fuck out. So I was like trying well, to leave. Yeah. Um, but I was walking past this fountain and all these nuns were sitting doing their morning prayer. And this nun looked up at me and she, she winked. And I said, oh my, that's my Aunt Barbara from Maria's life. That's my Aunt Barbara. So I, I told my Aunt Barbara, I was like, she's open minded. She was like, okay, I'm a little wacky, but okay. She's like, hmm, I want to give that a shot. And she did this past life experience. And when she, when she was done with that past life experience, she called me and she's like, um, were you wearing blah, 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 blah. And were there two people to the sides of you? And I'm like, shut up. <laughs> I was like, I'm like, Aunt Barbara, I had to have told you that, that that's what I looked like. Right. She's like, Maria, you didn't say a word to me about what you looked like. You just told me you saw me. I'm like, what? <laughs> I mean, poosh, mind blowing. Yes. So, okay. All that to say, I know it's hard to believe that past lives exist. You don't have to believe it. Right. I happen to believe that they do. Things like that make it relevant or make it obvious to hard me. Not that, to believe. That, yes. Yeah, that past lives exist. But how was it relevant to my present day life? Well, I was totally struggling with fertility stuff, just not able to be a mom, feeling stuck, feeling held back. And that past life memory, that dream happened around the time that we were able to adopt our, our oldest now, he's 13 years old now. Wow. And it's like, that's the importance. 
yeah. that is the importance of well, past life memories. Yeah, and, and it actually works in business too because I have a private coaching client that I've worked with and he was having a very hard time stepping into a higher level of production. Like he would get there and then he would fall back and then he would get there and then he would fall back and it was the it was seesaw that went back and forth. And uh, I, I was looking at him at one point, at one point when we were talking about it and I was like, oh, because this past life for him just came flying through my brain where he had been a successful merchant and then a king had noticed him and had taken him into the king's favor and raised his profile up and he had done super well and he was super successful. And then the king was capricious and suddenly just discarded him one day and he lost everything and fell into poverty and died. Oh my. And that was his past life. And so he had been doing this up and down. He couldn't let himself get over the hump. Oh yeah. Because he didn't want to repeat the king portion. You know, if I never get too high, I can never fall to, to the bottom and die, right? Mm -hmm. And so just having that memory allowed yes. him to overcome that and allowed him to surmount that and, and live Absolutely. That yeah. Oh, that is a perfect example of the healing inherent in past life regression. And it's really cool that someone like you can pick up on somebody's past life. I just had that in a spirit baby session where this woman, she didn't say anything about her having a North side kiddo already. We were talking to her babies on the other side and a past life memory came up. I was like, um, do you have an earth side kiddo that you're afraid of passing away? And she was like bawling. She just started bawling. Yes. I'm terrified. I don't know why. And I relayed this past life experience that came up into my awareness. She didn't have the experience herself, which mm -hmm. I think is really powerful. Um, so that's, that's something too, to, to be aware of when you have that experience in a hypnotic state that it, that it helps, um, yeah, your different. energy shift. Yeah. Um, yeah. but you're, yeah, you're great a, example. Yeah. You're in a different, um, state of mind. Uh, when you you're are. in a hypnosis, in a hypnotic state, you're literally like talking to your, your subconscious and your unconscious yeah. minds. And so yeah. because of that, you don't have to let it percolate through your conscious brain. It just automatically, uh, gels in at the, at, at the level that it normally gels in for kids. So mm -hmm. before the age yes. of seven, before the age of reason, yes. you don't have to go through all of those mental layers of, you know, is this right? Is this wrong? Do I have any beliefs that hold it back? Whatever. Everything just goes straight in. And that's the same way. That's the same state you're in. And hypnosis is, is that same sort of that's state. That's it. Yeah, it is. That's it. That. It's quite impactful then when you have, although I have to say that most people, when they come out of that trance state, they're like, am I making this up? Right. <laughs> Every Until single their whole one life actually. changes, right? Yeah. 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 So yeah, that's what I like to say. Welcome to being normal because right. that's what everybody says. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, so the type of person who would benefit from a past life therapy session would be someone who, who is really struggling with present life issues. It could be not being well physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and does not know what else to do. I'm yeah. throwing up my hands. I don't know what else to do. Yeah, you've tried um, it all, nothing happened. Yeah. 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 That's an ideal person, but that does not mean that somebody is like, well, I, you know, my body doesn't um, hold such and such. Well, I have this physical issue, but it, you know, it's work. These things work. There's no problem doing a past life regression sure. therapy if that could be helpful too, right? It's like, it's all, if it feels right to somebody to do a past life regression session, great. Follow yeah. your intuition. That is the most important thing. But yeah, it's usually somebody who's like, all right, I've pulled out all the stops I thought, and then I came across past life regression. So meh, why not? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So, you know, in short, I think what we say is past life therapy rocks <laughs> in short. <laughs> yeah. That's the end. Dro mic drop. Come on. <laughs> it rocks. Bang. That's right? it. Yeah. You do it, you do it he to heal, not because you're curious, right? 
You can. Oh my gosh, it's so fun. It's fun. You can. Not necessary, right? It's yeah. yeah, You can do it for entertainment. Yeah. um, But it really is so powerful. Otherwise. Well, and if you try to do it for entertainment with somebody who is a therapy person, you're yeah right. End up in the therapy (laughs) space. Whether you tried to do it or not, because, you know, they bring their gifts to the table. So they do. That is one thing I should say that's different between um, myself and perhaps other practitioners is that I happen to be a medium and with clairvoyance. And so I get to travel with people. And so when they are in their experience, I get to see what they're seeing, experience what they're experiencing. And so I can help after the end of the uh, trance, the hypnotic state, we always process, you know, here's what you experienced. How do you connect that to your present day life? And I will be able to offer other interpretations or extras that they didn't pick up on because of that um, right. extra right. little thing that I'm and, fortunate to and have. An extra <laughs> validation for the fact that it was yeah. there because you saw things that they saw and didn't say. That's yeah. right. Yeah, exactly. I've had that experience too, where I've, I've followed a client into a, a, a journey that they were on and I'm like, oh, well, tell me about the people in the corner. And she's like, how do you know about the people? I'm like, I'm with you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I saw the them. In the corner. <laughs> yeah, they were there. <laughs> so what's up with that? You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, but that's, that's what you're talking about. And that's what's really cool about it. Right. So, yeah. so let's say somebody wants to, so first off, we talked before we got on the call here and, and you're going to offer a discount for people who are coming yeah. up in the podcast. Yes. So tell them how they yeah. get the discount. Yeah. You just uh, head to my website and upon checking out for a past life regression therapy session, if you would like that, just use coupon code past life 20 and you're set. You can check out and book right away. Okay. And that's, that's yeah. all capital letters. All caps, past okay. life 20. Yep. All caps. All right. And your website is? Dr. Maria Rothenberger.com. And I know Rothenberger is complicated. So think hamburger, B U R G E R. I'm obviously not a vegetarian. No. <laughs> Dr. Maria Rothenberger. <laughs> link, it, link it up in your show notes. I'm sure it'll be there. It'll be in yep. the show notes. Yeah. But not, a, not every podcast player has it. So that's why we want to say mm. it out loud. So, okay. Well, thank you so much for coming. This has been wonderful. And uh, that's all we have for this week, folks. Please tune in next time when we add another chapter into your guide to energy, magic, and the spirit world. I'm Kelly Sparta here with Dr. Maria Rothenberger, and you have been listening to Spirit Sherpa. So long, everyone.